All right, so good afternoon, everyone. I hope you can hear me okay. So my name is João Vilela. I'm a professor at the University of Porto, uh, and I'm here to present you the again the IDA webinar series, which is a joint initiative between the IDA project and the CMU Portugal program. So until September 22, the IDA project and the CMU Portugal program will host three additional webinars on improving 5G risk management gathering leading experts, aspect, experts from academia and industry involved in the project. So I'd like to thank you all for attending this session. In this webinar, we will welcome Ricardo Vilas and Bruno Souza, and they will be talking to us about the impact of edge computing for 5G and telcos. So, uh, Okay, so uh, a little bit of a background about our, our speakers today. So Ricardo Vilasa is a senior researcher at Haslab and Mac at the University of Minho and in Esch Tech. He's working on high performance computing in both parallel and distributed systems and is for, and former query engine technical director at Linux Scale. He got his PhD uh, in a MAPI doctoral program in computer science back in 2012, and he has a strong background in distributed systems and large-scale data management, and uh, nearly 15 years, uh, 15 years of experience in national and international research projects. Bruno Souza, uh, another speaker, who is an assistant professor at the Department of Informatics and Engineering at the University of Coimbra since December 2018 where he also got his PhD in informatics engineering. Um, he is a senior researcher at the Center for Informatics and Systems of the University of Coimbra, and his research interests include resilience mechanisms for uh, in networks and applications or services, as well as intrusion detection and prevention in 5G networks and Internet of Things. So myself, I'm a professor at the University of Porto. My main research interests are in security and privacy of computer and communication systems. So throughout this webinar, I'm uh, well happy to inform you that we will be taking questions. So you can uh, post questions in the chat. So there's no live Q&A, uh, but you can post some of the questions in the chat and I'll be happy to pass them over to our speakers today. So feel free to... Um, Post questions as time goes by. I will keep an eye on the shot, and in the end, we can have an interactive discussion with our speakers. So that being said, we're about to start. So we'll move on to the presentation. So I will ask Ricardo and Bruno to share their screen in order to start. And the, the floor or the screen is yours. So go ahead and thank you. Hi, my name is Ricardo Vilarsa, and uh, uh, as uh, João told, I will give this this uh, presentation with uh, with Bruno. We will switch uh, more than one time during the presentation, uh, as we are in some somehow in complementary areas. I'm more focused my in my background more on distributed systems, and the Bruno more on the network side. So today we'll give a, a, a um, an overview of edge computing in general then for more for the, for the telco sector the a, a brief introduction to 5g and the mobile um, mobile edge computing then all these ecosystem, what are the opportunities and the challenges that appears with this combination of technologies. And then from the AIDA project, a, a brief overview of the project and the work in progress that is tightly related with, with, with these experts of the deployment in edge computing and 5G deployments. So currently, the, we, we see a, a great increase of devices that are online. The, nowadays, it's not only mobile devices, mobile phones and computers, and, uh, but also a, a lot of devices and shipping, shipper sensors 
uh, that are used for a lot of use case. And this, this estimate from Statista, that the number in, in less than 10 years, the, the expectation is to exceed the, the 20 billion number of connector devices. Um, and also in, in this context, there is a, a great near demand for, for, for low latency. And also uh, nowadays or from some years ago, there are several, several regulations regarding data privacy. So in this context, uh, dash computing in some way is, we have different layers of, of communication. We have what has been in the years before more traditional, more centralized cloud computing, where all the resources are outsourced in a, a, a cloud provider like Amazon, Google, Microsoft, uh, with large machines and the, the, the enterprise and all the, the customers were uploading their data and processing uh, the, the data in these centralized data centers. Uh, that are increasing, still increasing a lot. Uh, but now with this massive amount of devices in the low, uh, the layer below, uh, at the bottom in the internet of things, all these connected devices, there is the need of have a, a, a middle layer that is able to, to, to process that to offload some of the compute and storage from the centralized cloud uh, to the network logical extremes closer, closer to the point of data generation and consumption to the internet of things, to all these devices. Um, however, in contrast to, to cloud computing, where we have really big machines with uh, controller data centers in the Internet of Things. Uh, the devices is a network of resource constrained device, heterogeneous, and a lot of intelligent device, and that generate uh, a huge amount of data. So the the main characteristics uh, of edge is like I said before, this limited computational resource, uh, the, the CPU, the memory, uh, and the main, the main characteristic that implies uh, several arms is to, to be near, near the, the end user to this device in the internet of things. And this implies to have low latency because the processing is done near the, the, the device, closer to, to the source. And also to have a faster processing speed because there is no need to upload all data to, to the cloud. Uh, and with uh, 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 that is far away. Um, and also this allows to, 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 to to have a, a, a less dependency on the bandwidth and all the costs involved, uh, this need to transfer all the data. Um, and this allows to, to support real-time applications. Also, uh, a characteristic that we'll see later, it's also uh, an advantage, but of course a challenge, is this uh, massive amount of device and instead of relying as in the cloud to a centralized that still in the cloud can be the distributor resource but is seen as a centralized resource and are a few of them even if distributed but now in the edge environment we have a massive distributor geographically devices which also uh, is an opportunity to, to increase the, the, the availability of the servers. Uh, however, the, like I said, all these three layers are, I will say that doesn't make sense 
alone by itself in the current context. They they have to 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 collaborate, and in particular the cloud edge collaboration, the cloud edge continue as you want to call it, is really important to to have this orchestration and collaboration between the the cloud resources and the edge resources. Um, so in, in the edge, the, the main components, not going in, in, in details, but from the architecture of the edge, we have these traditional non-edge tiers by, by the public cloud providers, the, 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 the provider call where are the, the resource or can be in the tel. Then we have the, the, the tiers that are more regional, more local, data centers near the, 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 the user and usually in the service provider on the telco or internet service provider. Then we can have another tier that is more near the, the end user. Uh, uh, and then we have the device itself in the internet of things that in some case, uh, it also has some, some some uh, some processing power and storage that can can be used and uh, to to offer a, a better service. So the, the edge computing, uh, in some way, opens the, the opportunity to a, a large variety of use cases. There are some of them here, but uh, it's not a, an exhaustive list. Uh, for example, I used to say the ones that are more, 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 more traditional and more thought, the, the online streaming, the video stream in the, the, the edge cloud uh, setting, the, the online game with 5G, with better connectivity, uh, less latency, uh, all service that uh, needs um, that aggregation and, uh, and storage. Um, the artificial intelligence is also also a, a, a lot of use cases are using artificial intelligence and in particular in the cloud as continue uh, models more related with federated machine learning that is not part of this webinar but we will also have a, a, the next webinar of this series from the AIDA project focus on these aspects um, all, all, all use cases coordinating operations or from different geographies, uh, the autonomous vehicles, uh, the retail, smart cities, smart factories, uh, that are, are use cases that really can take advantage uh, of edge computing. So Bruno now will give an overview of 5G and mobile edge computing. Thank you, Ricardo. Uh, good afternoon to, to everyone. So, um, given the context of having uh, an explosive number of, of devices, of services that are provided to, to users, and these services uh, can leverage, let's say, the edge computing uh, characteristics, we need networks, let's say, to, to support the connection and also the the increased number of, of devices. And it appears 5G as a natural evolution of the cellular uh, networks. The 5G uh, network, let's say it, it's an upgrade, it's an evolution of the, the cellular uh, networks. And it provides, let's say, upgrade uh, updates in several uh, specifications. So regarding the radio access uh, network, also regarding the, the service layers, um, mainly to also increase the available bandwidth that is provided, let's say, and made available for the different uh, services, uh, and uh, also the, the number, the, the reduced uh, latency. And uh, in, in this uh, aspect, it also uh, includes, let's say, uh, speeds, uh, in the order of the, the gigabit, and uh, it can 
uh, enable the connection of the different uh, edges. Um, in the context of the DIDA project, uh, we are working mainly uh, leveraging the, um, the support of 5G in a service uh, layer uh, perspective. And in, in this sense, um, we are looking into the, the 5G uh, architecture, so the service-based architecture with different uh, services, not only for instance, for the access and uh, mobility uh, management, but also uh, looking into the um, functions that are responsible for the authentication and also, for instance, for the um, leveraging the different uh, supports, the service differentiation in the slicing uh, support of uh, 5G. And the, in the, the devolution of the radio um, access network services, they are also uh, having the trend of being managed by software uh, solutions. And in, in that uh, regard, for instance, the um, ORAN uh, Alliance is specifying uh, an architecture not only to promote the interoperability between different uh, vendors, uh, but also to bring support for, of uh, artificial intelligence uh, to the um, uh, radio uh, access um, la layer. And uh, it is also important that uh, one key innovative aspects also is the reference points in different architectures and the 5G architecture is not uh, an exception where the different services expose well-specified APIs which enable the communication and, and facilitate the exchange of uh, information between the different uh, services. So uh, one of the most important, uh, most and not only, uh, but technologies that is, is relevant uh, for the edge computing is MEC, uh, multi-access edge uh, computing. And this, um, this is it, this technology is a set of, of standards uh, being specified by uh, EPSI, so the European Telecommunication Standards uh, Institute, and it mainly aims to, um, to provide uh, a set of specifications to allow applications to run in different environments, so in, in virtualized environments, which can be on the edge, which can be on uh, the cloud. And uh, for this purpose, it is devised um, an architecture uh, specifying different levels. So the system where, for instance, we have a centralized orchestration uh, component, the host level, which corresponds to the, um, let's say, the hosts that can be at the edge and that will be uh, responsible to uh, run the applications to provide services and expose uh, APIs to other uh, applications. And then we have also, let's say, the, the network uh, level, mainly, for instance, considering different uh, heterogeneous uh, technologies. And uh, regarding the heterogeneous and the, the network uh, level, so the heterogeneous uh, technologies are also um, a key aspect regarding 5G because it's, for instance, also brings support to enable machine-to-machine -machine, um, communications and uh, allow uh, high-density connections uh, and so on. Regarding the, the MAC uh, specification, um, it mainly uh, the specifications include not only uh, well uh, procedures, well-defined procedures to develop applications as well as how they can be deployed and maintained in the different uh, environments. So these uh, virtual, virtual, in virtualized uh, infrastructures. And uh, of course, there is a direct a network connection between Mac and uh, uh, 5G. And 
Uh, in this uh, regard, there are different possible deployment uh, solutions. These are, for instance, documented in the Etsy uh, documentation, and uh, they provide also, uh, for instance, a, a white paper where the, um, the Mac can be deployed, for instance, at the UPF, so user plane uh, function, or can uh, be uh, collocated with the other uh, application uh, functions. And the, the orchestration uh, component, for instance, um, also interacts with the services that are specific to, to 5G, for instance, NET, the network exposure function, which is uh, responsible to maintain um, the reachability, so the information regarding the endpoints of the remaining uh, 5G uh, service. And uh, not only Mac, but also uh, 5G, they are supported, let's say, by a, a set of uh, technologies. The, the ones that are enumerated in the slides are not exhaustive, but at least they are the most uh, representative. So, of course, we have the um, network function virtualization, where different uh, network functions, firewalls, intrusion detection, let's say, can be uh, run in virtual uh, environments. And these virtual environments, let's say, can be as we can look into them as being virtual machines. And now the trend is to look into uh, container uh, network functions, so running as microservices, and the software-defined uh, network, so SDN, which enables the management of, of the network through the split of the control and, and the data plane. And of course, this facilitates all the administrative uh, functions that we need to have in the, the network, but it also can increase, let's say, and facilitate the interoperability between uh, different vendors. Um, so managing equipment from different vendors and so on, and also um, solution to interconnect uh, different edge. The service function chaining is, is a key technology, for instance, for policy enforcement. So assuring that all the traffic, for instance, passes through a firewall, then through another uh, security function, for instance, an intrusion detection, um, or even for uh, quality of service uh, and so on. And this uh, is being, for instance, uh, specified uh, inside uh, ITF and mainly, let's say, to allow the, an efficient management of the different traffic flows. And um, as, as already um, spoken, the, the network slicing, which allows, let's say, uh, a logic separation um, of the resources of the 5G uh, network and doing this split according to the requirements. So some applications, uh, let's say, have requirements in terms of latency. Uh, so there should be, for instance, a slice dedicated to this kind of services. Other, others on the other side require more bandwidth. So the, the logic is to have, let's say, a slice dedicated to applications that um, require more bandwidth. And the paradigm regarding on how we, let's say, the content is distributed is also changing. So we have the information-centric uh, network, so the classic uh, client-server model is becoming obsolete. And we see, the, let's say, uh, content is mainly accessed access through the person's entities that are interested in them. So, and having publish, subscribe models, uh, and so on. And in this sense, uh, this is also uh, important because, for instance, if a user is interested in a specific content, and if this content is already available at the edge, of course, we decrease the resources that are used in the, the network, 
but also reduce uh, latency uh, and so on. And um, of course, uh, 5G, when connected to uh, the edge computing, they let's say they have we have here a lot of uh, opportunities um, because let's say the network can be uh, used it in a more efficient uh, way and um, if managed properly we can let's say enable support the edge cloud uh, continuum so where the services uh, are provided and the user for instance does not know if the service is being um, provided, uh, let's say, a running at the edge or at the the serve, uh, or at the, the cloud, and uh, we can have also, um, let's say, um, a, a unified, for instance, environment regarding the the applications um, and so on. I don't know, Ricardo, if you want to add something. Yeah, so the is like Bruno was saying this in this context, uh, or the edge combined with 5G and the mobile, the multi access edge computing. And there are uh, 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 several opportunities that he raised, and also challenges. And this, like, like I said before, this the, the, the edge, I, I, I don't envision the edge without the cloud. So the, there is always this collaboration and the continuum. And we see that a lot of cloud uh, providers, the, the well-known or call hyperscalers are doing partnerships with service providers. For example, in the States, the Verizon is doing with Amazon and Google Cloud. Johnny Force to, to build a, a bigger ecosystem to support all these services um, and taking advantage of the connectivity of the service provider and also all these know-how to help the, the, the cloud providers. And also with this, there is a deep integration of, of the computation inside, let's say, the, the network part of the service provider. But this also creates um, a flexible, unified, and integrated execution environment for distributed applications uh, that is used by the service provider for the inner network for functions that it needs to, to, to run its service and support the client, but also to allow the client to run third-party uh, applications. Uh, these all these ecosystems also allows to automate uh, several processes with this uh, edge mobile uh, edge uh, context we see and like we say and in somehow the the, um, the evolution the 5g the in, in the industry is also related with all these capabilities and the, the ability to automate more process. Uh, and there is this opportunity to move some workloads and service towards the, 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 the network edge, either to offer new applications and service or to have a better experience with existing applications with less latency and so on. Uh, and this also, and all this virtualization, could allow the service provider to 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 offer simply UEFI network uh, operations. And uh, in general, this allows to improve flexibility of the, the the operations, all the availability, with several resources being able to to online, and we can have some redundancy and to to have the, the service more available and in different uh, geographic areas and to be more efficient like with less bandwidth and being faster and the the, the resilience that is a type and also and uh, to 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 be able to leverage all if we are able to leverage uh, all this device and uh, to have a more scalable service of course, this is um, 
a, a challenge, that is a challenge year, uh, because now applications are running, they were already, but now it's a much larger distributor architecture with a great number of components running in an heterogeneous network. And like I said, in the cloud, there are also several uh, distributed de deployments, but now we are talking with uh, the hundreds or even thousands of, of nodes and also this this complexity and increasing this always implies some increase overhead in the manage of these physical locations which can be difficult for smaller companies to 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 manage so that that is always is sellers how to distribute this achieving great levels of scalability because it's not easy and um, then there is these constraints uh, at their side it's not the re the resources have not limited or illimited capabilities with some or some hours in the cloud uh, and also they are heterogeneous there are diverse hardware and software that we need to handle and in particular the hardware in there we see much more different architectures in mobile with arm so it saves different instruction sets and now with the risk five for 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 um, for cpu and then several different devices in particular also for for networks with are nowadays much more dedicated hardware being used uh, for for a certain service like FPGAs, ASICs being used for, for, for the, and of course, for, um, for the machine learning part, uh, the GPUs and uh, DPUs, uh, TensorFlow, the de dedicated uh, hardware. Um, and then how to manage another challenge is now we have these uh, components like as running through from the, 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 the internet of things to the edge until the cloud. And we need to manage the service, which part uh, is better to run at the edge, which part is better to run uh, at the device itself, which part is able. And all this, there is a lot of requirements, either from latency or, or, or bandwidth, or even security, because each component uh, as different, there is a different trade-off. If there is a strict requirement to have only on the local edge that is somehow in the same administrative area to, to all this processing can be done, but to the cloud, we need privacy techniques to, to have a, a, a anonymity on the data we are processing. Uh, but this allocation of resources implies the uh, centralized orchestration and automata automation of these tools. Then, like I said in this presentation, we are not going in the details of the, the, the security part. Uh, that will be a team for the fourth uh, webinar. Uh, but there are, in, in this context, several security and safety assumptions uh, because the, the physical security of the edge device by itself is some um, well, most of the time lower than of course sites because uh, in cloud they are inside a data center with a strict access control policy the physical security is is different uh, if we have a uh, 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 um, in particular, in the Internet of Things, we have sensors uh, uh, widespread globally in any place. Uh, and this, of course, brings a higher risk of malicious or accidental situations, the trust issues uh, with the privacy and confidentiality guarantees that raise the question of trust, even if we the results that we have for a, a given query reflect the actual data and what we have, or if the data is tainted, or the 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 results that are passed are are, are misguided in some way. 
So now I will give uh, an overview of the, the AIDA project itself. Uh, the, the, it's a CMU Portugal, a large scale collaborative project uh, that all these projects are led by a Portuguese ICT company. In this case, it's led by, by Mobilio, uh, that at the time he, he, of the, uh, the proposal it was we do, and now with Mobilium. And then we have as academic partners uh, in Nestec, uh, University of Coimbra, and uh, Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, this is an, uh, 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 an overview with, with not any details on, on the architecture of the project. So the main goal of the project is Mobilium as a software that is right, that is a risk management software. Uh, and they want, and they are on, do, they are already doing this. They want to leverage uh, all these new, 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 new technologies, that's computing and 5G, and as part of it, the, to explore the emergent federated machine learning techniques. But like I said before, there are several security aspects that are arise with these uh, environments. So there is a, a focus on the resilience to intrusion and tampering, and also on the data privacy and confidential. So dark chapter, Briefly, there are several edge deployments where some parts of the project will be run as a microservice, others will be run in the cloud. There is a secure and privacy data store and secure communication between the cloud and the edge. And then there are some vertical components that are leading with the distribution orchestration of the service, like I said. And also with the intrusion detection and tolerance, and also on the monitoring of the framework and its adaptation. Um, so the briefly the, the expected achievements in that are most of them or all of them are already ongoing is to scale the scale out the distribution of the, 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 the components of right in, in edge systems uh, and also in 5G networks. To have um, a data lake support that allows to query in an efficient manner uh, different data sources with either structure or arm structure and offer an integrated view of the data in this environment of cloud and edge, where some data sources are on the cloud and some are on the edge, then how to efficiently monitor the stats of this complex distributed framework with some components running at the edge, others or different edge locations and others on the cloud. Then all these privacy preserving storage and processing uh, issues. Um, and also the intrusion and the detection and tolerance, like I said, and validated in particular the, the if the edge components are secure and trustworthy. And like I said, and this will be the detailed topic of the next webinar, and how to evolve the, the already existing machine learning algorithms of the platform to a, a federated a uh, machine learning model enabled the training in this distributed uh, context and also to be adaptive and learn with the patterns and context evolution in different uh, locations. Um, so the, the expected impact of the project is to allow the mobile to extend the document product uh, service offering it uh, in, 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 in current, but also on potential on new clients, uh, innovative and financial solution in this context, and 
to, like I said, to, to approach new markets because this can be extended not only to, 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 to the telco solar sector, but to, to different uh, sectors. Uh, and who, in this to, in some way, to go with uh, the, the, the inevitable uh, evolution of the, 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 the technologies that are being used uh, by, by telco companies. Uh, so I now and now will be Bruno and then I will uh, will give a, a brief overview of the work that we are currently doing in Aida. And today, like I said, the focus will be on this distribution of components uh, in the edge cloud context. So Bruno. Thank you, Ricard. Uh, one of the, the works that um, we are considering is mainly uh, the choice of the edge uh, platform. So uh, if we have components running at the core, so for instance, if we have clusters of Kubernetes, then what can be the choice of having uh, a solution, a platform uh, to run at the edge? And KubeEdge, uh, one of the projects uh, from the CA CNCF, so the Cloud Native Co Computing uh, Foundation, appears as uh, a natural uh, choice given the compatibility with the Kubernetes, so the core, um, and also being able to run in different uh, platforms in terms of uh, computation. And um, one uh, key aspect that we are uh, mainly addressing is how we can enable the support of different edges uh, and the intercommunication with the core uh, components. Um, and uh, since there are multiple uh, solutions in terms of transport protocols that can be used, uh, and, and for instance, uh, already supporting um, the new versions of HTTP, uh, HTTP3, for instance, which is based on, on the quick uh, protocol. So we are also looking into this, mainly assessing the, the performance when there are possible different failures, uh, when the edge can have some issues con connecting and synchronizing with, uh, with the, um, the core. Uh, mainly, let's say, to, to assess what can be the resilience that we can have with, with Kubeedge. And for the data plane, Kubeedge already brings uh, Edge Mesh, what the solution of Edge Mesh, which enables the uh, communication of uh, the different edges at the, the data plane with different uh, agents in each uh, edge um, and so on. So we are looking uh, into, let's say, having different edges with different uh, characteristics and um, checking which can be, let's say, the transport protocol that can be more efficient towards the either uh, goals. Yeah, so I now will give a, an over, a quick overview of different works that we are doing different components uh, each one that is here the the information of the, the the work with more details and most of them already i have, I have prototypes some available or uh, public others only in the the project and that are now being integrated as a whole in the project so uh, in particular, a work that we've been doing is particular on the, the orchestration of the, this service and in the context of uh, Kubernetes clusters, or in particular, uh, the QBH uh, uh, cluster, how we can take advantage of having a tightly uh, correlation between the, the edge, let's say cluster, and the cloud cluster being physically nearby. Um, and for this, we 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 enhance the 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 
the, we, he had a, 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 an external schedule to, to Kubernetes coverage that is able to, to take advantage of this information and it has measurable overhead and the response types because it takes into account the collocation it take, tries to maximize depending on the availability of the computational resource of course uh, the 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 collocation of the edge and the cloud deployments for service that the user requests and this provides uh, a big improvement in the the response time um, Another work is all the management of, of all the, the, this data uh, in, in this context of edge cloud continuing, and we define uh, an architecture to unify the, the data management for this edge cloud computing that is able to tackle both analytical and transactional workloads. And both of them rely on this a data lakes polyglot middleware that is able to, to, to tackle different data sources with different formats and uh, uh, with different uh, formats and encoding and is able to efficiently query this integrated view. Uh, the synchronization middleware that I will go in more details is in shy eyes of efficient transferring the data from the edge nodes to the, to the cloud. And the trans transactional middleware that I will then give also some more details is able to, to guarantee consistent uh, reads and isolated atomic updates uh, in this continuum of edge and cloud. Um, so regarding the, the, the synchronization uh, and not going in many details that are more details in the paper. Uh, we are we define an adaptive database synchronization, and it's a model where we consider that the that in the, the cloud uh, the the nodes as cache of data from different edge locations, uh, and then how we in adaptive manner are able to synchronize this data according to, to the queries that are needed. And basically this adaptive protocol is able to, to make a balance dynamically between reduce, reducing the amount of data that is transferred from the edge in the cloud uh, and also the computational effort that is required to, to do this synchronization. Uh, we are, like I said, regarding the, the for transactional workloads to also uh, in this poly stored um, uh, environment, uh, how to provide this because each uh, data store has limited capabilities and there is a, a a sheer diversity of requirements from NoSQL, different NoSQL database, a simple key value store to more uh, uh, graph oriented or traditional relational database. And uh, our proposal is from this cloud component that to leverage its own query engine to, to achieve this transactional isolation. And, and briefly, with in this uh, in this model, from the, the transactional, in some way we uh, have different data sources that are needed for the transactional, where we have the snapshot of data that are being written. We have the the, the persistent storage. We have a, a temporary cache, and then we have the temporary data um, of, of of the transaction. And um, that is out of the context here, but there are more details here. Uh, another part that is important, like I said, in all this context of cloud edge with massive amount of devices, uh, different locations and distributed uh, environment with a lot of device is how we are able to, in a non-intrusive manner, to, to analyze the platform and be able to, to react. 
And for this, we have been working on a, a, a system that is able to do non-intrusive causal analysis of it, uh, basically in the, in particular for microservice environments, is able to collect data from the kernel to be able to establish causality. And then it combines this with all the logs from the application. Uh, and for this, it, it uh, builds in a graph database uh, a, a causal analysis where the user can submit queries uh, to analyze the, 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 the application. So this is the end of this webinar of the, the presentation. And now I will switch to João that will manage the, the key and a part. All right, so thank you very much, Ricardo and Bruno, for, for the presentation. Uh, so maybe we can uh, stop sharing now and maybe go back to the slides if, if needed. Uh, in any case, so I, I would like to start to uh, go through uh, one of the questions that is in the chat, which is from Francisco Fons from Altis Labs, on how or where are you, are you planning to deploy Mac and 5G as described in the, the slide on expected outgoing achievements? So maybe Bruno, you want to comment on that? Okay. Uh, Francisco, thanks for, for the, the question. Uh, regarding the, um, the deployment of, of Mac, one of the, um, the choices of also using Kubernetes is the, the support that is planned to be, uh, let's say Kubernetes is, support, is, plan, is planning to have a support for, for Mac. So Kubernetes also appears, it was chosen, given uh, to that. How it can be deployed, let's say, how the Mac, so Kubernetes, and uh, deploy it in, a, in 5G. Uh, we are analyzing different, um, different uh, solutions. So if it can be deployed, let's say, in a network uh, aggregation point or uh, collocated with the, the UPF. Um, if, if you are saying that, if you are saying that if we want to consider the Etsy Mac, so the full uh, architecture, uh, not, not the full, but some parts at least those that Kubech can uh, support. All right, so I guess with that, you already answered to, to this last question, right? Yes. So another question is from Panagiotis. What is the 5G reality in Portugal and what kind of APIs will be available for end users? So it's a bit beyond the scope of this project, but I want to comment. Uh, well, I, I'm not the best person to, to, to answer this, but I, I do believe that we have people in the audience that are best suited to, uh, to answer this. Uh, because uh, I'm not fully aware regarding the, the deployment and the 5G uh, coverage network that we have on, on our country. So I, I do right. not want... So uh, I don't think I'm breaking any rule here, but maybe we could give uh, the floor to Francisco if he wants to comment on that. Francisco, would you like to uh, address this question from Panagiotis? I don't think we're hearing you. If you're not interested, it's, it's okay. I mean, you, you're you're a guest here, not. Like Bruno was saying, we are from the uh, research institute, so we are not Mobilium for sure. But I think there is no none here from Mobilium. No, the 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 this. What I knew as a user, I think this context, because now in five G, I think for the first time in Portugal. There is a, a global national uh, context uh, for all the players to, to apply, but this, there are some problems. It was canceled, and now I think the new one was already done. I don't know the details. So we are far from a deployment, in, I will say, in Portugal for now. But if there are... Right, so we're we're having some issues in, in having Francisco to talk, so he can 
complement in writing and I can pass that uh, if, if he wants to. So in, in any case, I can, I can, um, so if there's, I don't think there's any other questions because Elena was already addressed by Bruno, right? So um, in case you have some other questions, feel free to post them in the chat. Otherwise I, I do have a, a couple of questions I would also like to pose our speakers, uh, particularly to, uh, for example, to Ricardo. Um, so this is not a specific question related to uh, particular aspects of the project because I'm part of the project I've been following, but in more general. So many services nowadays are still hanging in the cloud, right? Uh, so the, the cloud will obviously still have its role, but it's expected, as you mentioned, that part of the services transition to closer to the users, to the edge, because of the advantages that this brings, uh, such as latency reduction. So how do you foresee this will impact, impact the roles of cloud service providers within this, this ecosystem? Uh, this is uh, a, a, a really good question. And like I said, there are a large collaboration between large cloud providers, uh, Amazon, Google, and Microsoft with more traditional telco service providers, in particular in states with Verizon. But also, this is always a, a, a question of margins and who, 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 who gets the bill, who gets the money. So they are also... Who, they have huge data centers in the cloud, but they are also making a huge effort to have more edge uh, data centers near the user because they 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 also want these to to leverage this. So I think it will be a, a mix of collaboration in in some ways, but they will also somehow they will also be. They are now focused. Oh, they were focusing on the cloud, but now they. I I will not say that they will replace telco and service providers, and but part of this 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 service or not the network itself, but the 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 resource, the computational resource, they will also make a, an effort to to offer the this. All right, so you touched another point I would like to discuss, so which is, so by having these services closer to the users, so who, who do you think will be responsible for managing these services? Will still be cloud or telco providers or will it be intermediate providers? Um, and this may cause the emergence of a large set of smaller heterogeneous providers. So do you foresee a challenge because of that? Yeah, do, do, this in this context with with the, the this heterogeneous environment with cloud edge yeah it's because even from from for now we have either full cloud and it's a cloud provider it's one company that is responsible for the data and for processing everything but now part of it will be on the service provider part of to be on the cloud that of course will have a contract but still and all the these privacy issues and but not only private but there are a lot of issues that we erase with this because that's it it's a, a more complex way environment with different administrative domains that all this stack is i don't foresee that some case will be part of the same company that that has everything, but we'll have a mix in most cases. And this, of course, uh, is a challenge. All right, yeah, so uh, definitely. So there will be a very heterogeneous ecosystem to manage, but plenty of opportunities can arise from there, I think. Uh, so not no more questions from the chat yet. So uh, within this complex ecosystem, so from a networking perspective, there will also be several layers to support edge computing through networking technologies and solutions, which may include, as Bruno mentioned, then NFV, SDN, network slicing, and so on. So this will require uh, telco providers, but also possibly intermediate and telco agnostic provider of services. So how do you foresee, Bruno, that this will be handled from a technology perspective? So for example, through SDN to encompass different communication technologies that are foreseen in 5G networks. Uh, 
Well, um, on um, on that sense, uh, I do believe that let's say innovation is already made through alliances. And uh, regarding, for instance, uh, SDN and also the interconnection between the different uh, components, uh, this it will be possible by um, specifying, let's say, standard. Uh, APIs, standard uh, protocols that can work on these heterogeneous uh, environments and uh, uh, where vendors, let's say, and not only vendors, but also technology providers, network operators form kind of alliances, let's say, to make possible this kind of ecosystem. And I think one interesting example of this is already the Oran Alliance, uh, where different, where they are trying to, let's say, to innovate in terms of the radio access network uh, and also bringing key aspects, for instance, making already intelligent decisions at the ra radio uh, access network. And this, for sure, will also happen the same with SDN, uh, mm -hmm. since it has a lot of possibilities, since it, let's say, it can manage the, the network and, and so on. All right, thank you so much. Um, I don't see any more questions in the chat. So um, I guess we can then uh, close this uh, session. So thank you very much for, for participating in, uh, in all the questions and discussion, the presentation from Bruno and Ricardo. So it's now time to close this webinar, uh, but I would like to uh, leave a note on the next webinar. So stay tuned and don't miss the chance to participate. It's going to be uh, focused on the topic of uh, federated learning, methods, applications, and challenges. It will take place on April 20, and it will feature uh, Paula Silva from Inesctec and Nuno Antunes from the University of Coimbra. So looking forward to see you in the next sessions of this webinar series. So thank you very much for your participation.